Okay, welcome to Life Stories. These are where we are going to hear stories from people in our community, um, sharing their testimonies, sharing their journey, sharing quirky things about them that you didn't know uh, so that you can get to know them a little bit better. And um, there is just so much power in our stories, the power of a testimony. It's, it's what's shaped you to where you are now in your journey and, uh, and, and how we've all ended up here in a community together. So hearing that journey is so cool. Um, George was sharing with us after the, uh, after the interview, um, he actually shared with us this Abraham, I think it was Abraham Lincoln quote, uh, maybe I'm wrong about that, but it, I think that's what he had said. And it, it said this, Abraham Lincoln had said, I don't like that guy much, so I need to get to know him. And that's in no reference to George uh, by any means, but I love that quote. As we get to know somebody, we, we just hear more about their story. It's amazing how um, we just start to grow fond of each other. So this is Life Stories. The first person we are interviewing for a life story is George Denning. And uh, I know you're going to enjoy it. So I'm just going to roll right into our conversation. So how did you feel about the questions I sent you? Great questions. I, I, uh, it's straightforward. It's uh, straightforward, not too complicated. No, no. And, now, when you when you ask me about things you don't people don't know about me, there's there's two things. One is uh, I uh, my go to comfort food is KD and a boiled egg and a dill pickle. I uh, I could eat that three times a week, easy. I uh, I have no KD, a KD, a boiled egg and a, and a dill pickle. And and you do this. This is like three. Days. I don't always do this, but I could do it frequently. <laughs> so. Do you take, so you, you make the KD and then you do a hard boiled egg? You hard boiled egg. I boil, I boil it in the pot. Okay. Oh, with the KD. With the KD. Okay. Kind of like what people do with noodles. Yeah. Uh, sometimes. And then and I usually embellish the KD with sour cream mm. and uh, an extra cheese. Okay. Nice. And then you slice a pickle into this as well? Or no, you just... no. I, then I have a pickle on the side, but. Uh, pickle on the side. Just a great big like gherkins, you know, lots of garlic pickle that's man that to me is like the perfect lunch that that's uh i have never tried i never tire of that food okay you know what we used to do you know it doesn't sound like too weird i, uh, I, might, I might try that yeah maybe would try that see i maybe would, I'm pretty maybe would like try like like deep fried dill pickles too mm. um i've had them the best it's just not it's not my thing i'm not into deep fried dill pickles it's, I had it once with my daughter. I was watching football at a bar, and she said, you got to try these deep-fried dill pickles. And, uh, wow, they were amazing. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so we used to – I remember when I was a kid, so they would make KD and then slice up hot dogs into it mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. There's that, your protein. That was a pretty – yeah, that was a pretty normal thing to have when we were kids. But uh, uh, never, uh, never an egg and never a pickle with it, though. But uh, You know what? I like pickle and cheese. Anyways, this is about you, George, <laughs> not about me and what I like. See what's happening here? <laughs> why, why don't you ask me some questions? <laughs> I'll tell you my story. <laughs> Anyways, what, so for people who don't know where you're at in life right now, uh, why don't you update us on that? Well, I'm a, um, I'm a retired nurse, but I'm not really that retired. I'm, I'm a semi-retired nurse who... Uh, I, I still work a little too much. I'm still learning to be retired. I'm learning how not to work. I, I get a lot of calls to work. I work endoscopy and uh, I just, uh, I get lots of calls in the morning. When I wake up, there's calls on my text that says, you wanna work today? Mm. And um, it's, it's quite frequent. So I'm trying to learn how to be a retired person. Okay. It's it's a bit of a struggle. I've actually become a kind of a grumpy old man in the last year or so. Yeah, off my lawn. It's a struggle. Have, have you ever watched the uh, the the movie um or the read the book A Man Called Ove? No. No. Great, great book. It's a Swedish book about a grumpy old miserable guy who is angry with the world, and and he always he's trying to kill himself frequently. It's it's actually quite a humorous book, although that sounds kind of sad. And uh, and as I read this book, I thought that that's me. I'm just an old man looking at the world, thinking, "Gee, people are stupid." 
and uh, and uh, you know, and, and man, these people are managing the healthcare stupid and 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 grumpy stuff. In fact, I'm doing a talk at the church on May 16th, and it's largely about being a grumpy old man. So there, <laughs> there's my uh, <laughs> there's my commercial. There's my come hear the rest of it. <laughs> Sounds really good. On May 16th. So, so you get lots of calls for work, uh, just it, and you get to just kind of pick and choose which ones you say yes to and which ones you don't. That's right. I, I'm a casual nurse, so I don't have to say yes, and they don't have to give me anything. So they have no obligation to me. I, I, I'm, I'm, but when I take a shift, then I have to do it. Oh yeah. Okay. So like, if you fit, uh, you're in. But if I, I don't have to do anything, I'm. It's actually a very serious. My whole career, I was always super envious. Of casual nurses. Right. And I thought, man, this is the life. Yeah. Now I'm doing it. So, because uh, yeah. my whole career I was a full time nurse, so I always had to show up for the, you know, for my four or five uh, a week. And oh yeah, not anymore. All right. Cool. So George, I have heard parts and pieces of your story, um, and it's intriguing. Um, and uh, but. For those who don't know your journey, uh, your journey to where you came to know Jesus, uh, your journey through the church, your journey of self-discovery, um, and, and all of that, where would you like to begin in that, maybe in, in how you met Jesus for the first time, and then from there, how it progressed? Well, you know, I I was raised in, in the church. I was raised in a pretty solid quality home. My parents loved each other. Uh, they loved me. They weren't perfect. They, they weren't. They were super involved church people in the Christian Reformed Church. So I was raised in that Christian Reformed tradition, Calvinist, very Calvinist. Um, and and I was raised in a in a solid, loving home. I'm the fourth of five siblings, and uh, I went to a private Christian school. As a child, my whole life, I went to a private Christian school. When I was about 14, 13, 14, I just got in with some lousy friends. And they were friends from that school, that church, that same environment. And we just became little hellions, little orangutans. We would, and, and back then, your parents never knew what you were doing. I mean, literally on a, on a non-school day, I would leave home at eight or nine in the morning and show up again at five. <laughs> parents had no idea what we were up to. We, were, we lived on the outskirts of Northeast Edmonton. We had fields and, and farms on the outskirts and we had bicycles all the time. And we were just up to Lots of good stuff, but lots of no good stuff. You know, we were arsonists. We were thieves. Yeah. We were stealing cigarettes sometimes. Porn, although porn was never a really big issue for me. Uh, going and learning. I learned how to swim kind of by myself at a at a big pit outside of Edmonton, and we would go there and wonder. Which you almost sounded like a teenager. Hmm? Yeah, you almost sounded like a teenager. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I had a, I had a, a sort of a, 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 an anger against the church, and I've always kind of been a rebel. You know, if you push me, I'm going to push back. And and for yeah, some yeah, reason, yeah. the fourth child, I just, I threw off my parental traces and, and what they wanted from me, and mm -hmm. I basically gave them the proverbial finger. I, I remember when I was about 14 or 15, and I was late for lunch. And my mother was sitting there, and I was about to eat, and she said, well, aren't, aren't you going to pray for your food? And I said, no, I don't pray anymore. And huh. I, just, I, I gave up praying. She handled that well. I, I must say, she didn't just try to wring my arm and make me pray. You know, she just said, oh. you know, she was deeply troubled. So my mother was chronically ill. She had rheumatoid arthritis, as bad a case ever. So she was always kind of sick always from the time i was about five her whole life she was always kind of sick and disabled 
and and a little bit kind of out of the picture in some way. She was just barely able to function herself. Eh? Mm -hmm. And my old man was a middle manager and he provided really well. So here I am, I'm this rebellious kid and I just went into this quite significantly. I started to like smoke, but then that was no big deal because Dutch people all smoked back then. <laughs> and and um, I, I started to experiment in, in, in a pot, uh, drinking, and I became a guy who just really liked smoking pot. I, I, I have smoked an enormous amount of marijuana in my life uh, and uh, over the years, oh, you know, I, I quit a long time ago, but I love that stuff and, uh, and uh, I, I couldn't get enough of it. This had a huge adverse effect on my schooling because pot yeah, and schooling doesn't, doesn't work all that well. And mm -hmm. uh, I quit uh, school after my grade 11 year, but I really quit school in the middle of my grade 10 year. I, I attended school in grade 11, but I, I don't really have it on grade 11 education. I don't have a high school education. I, I, I've never graduated, uh, even to this day. And, uh, and so I quit school. Uh, I was about 17. I was pumping gas. Back then, we didn't have self-serves. I was pumping gas. And right across the street was a place where they um, built saddles. It was a place called Clover Bar Saddlery. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there were people who had accounts at this gas station, and I got to know them. And unbeknownst to me, there was just this enormous uh, Christian influence at this saddle shop. And uh, I, I met a, a woman there. Her name was Lorraine, who became my wife. She, uh, but she was working there. She was a brand new Christian. She also became a Christian through the work of this saddle shop, through the, through the influence. So that saddle shop was an amazingly fruitful place. Anyway, so I was a, 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 a dropout. And I needed a job. And I just said to the manager of the saddle shop, a guy named Dwayne, would you hire someone? You know, I'm, I'm out of school now. And he hired me and he, and he apprenticed me as a saddle maker. And I ended up spending 10 years of my life uh, building saddles and tack, uh, halters, bridles, all that stuff, all the stuff out of leather. And uh, I, I did that. And eventually, Dwayne started his own company, the Tall Horse Saddlery, and I went with him. And I ended up building custom Western saddles. Uh, I've probably built four plus hundred custom saddles in my life, and they're all summer. I've, I've seen a few of them over the years since you oh, know yeah. uh, it's because it's been a long time. And anyways, that's something I, I that's another thing about me. So here I am, this pot smoking saddle maker in the back. And all these Christians are around, and these are not people of a reform background at all. They're from a, like a, a much more evangelical. They were uh, brethren people, is what they were. And there was this brand new Christian who was super excited about her faith, and she would just come back, and we would have these discussions. Mm -hmm. And I always had a smart ass comment about faith and the Bible, and and she she just was she said. Well, she didn't know half the answers. Like she wasn't giving me answers. She was just loving Jesus. Like she really was. She was, she would come in the back. She was going to Bible school half time and she had to read her Bible through the year. And she'd come in the back, sit on a saddle stand and, and just read her Bible. And, uh, and I knew she was doing this and I don't even think she was trying to reach me. She was just being in love with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was kind of cool. Anyways, I eventually moved on to this uh, tall horse saddlery where, where Lorraine and Dwayne went. These are all Christian folk. And I'm building saddles and I'm digging a pit for myself. Like I'm smoking lots of pot. I'm drinking on the weekends. I'm uh, almost, a, I'm smoking a pack and a half a day. And, uh, and I'm, I'm living rough. At that time, for a while, I actually wore a handlebar mustache and Wrangler jeans and cowboy boots, and I looked the part, but I was never a cowboy. Eh? Still, <laughs> never was. Lorraine was a cowgirl, but I wasn't a cowboy, and, and that's probably why I never lasted in the saddle business. <laughs> Dug this pit and, and <sighs> partying all the time. I decided with a friend we were going to take a trip across Canada. We were going to drive 
in my old goat puke green Nova. It was about a 74 Nova. And we drove that. My friend and I, Al, we drove all the way to St. John's, Newfoundland. And it was like a voyage of discovery. I'm like 19, I guess, when this is going on. And uh, we and I decided we're going to drive and we're going to go without, without pot. Because I knew pot was a real problem because I want to have my mind clear and I'm going to discover what life and who I'm about. But we got about uh, as far as uh, mid-Ontario and I had to go score some dope. And the rest of the trip was just a burnout, you know. Yeah. And just smoking a lot of weed and driving. And, you know, if you drive from Edmonton to St. John's, Newfoundland, that is a long drive. Mm -hmm. and, uh, got to St. John's, Newfoundland. And uh, and looked around a bit. We didn't spend a lot of days there. And I sat up on Signal Hill. And and Signal Hill is a very very beautiful place. And there's these crashing waves, and there's this like a shrouded mist. It's almost like Lord of the Rings. And uh, and for the first time in my adult life, I sat on that, and I had a mystical experience. And I saw God in the ocean, and I acknowledged there's a God. Mm -hmm. And and I I said, okay, there's a God. I mean, I was I was fighting it, right? I was I was fighting it behind a cloud of pot smoking stupidity. But I mean, that, I said that thing, and I, what I just said, and then that night I probably had the most significant. Uh, drunk i've ever had in my life in a place called kitty bitty and uh and then next morning we got up all hung over got in our monova and drove back home to edmonton and uh that was a long haul got to uh got home and you know what i started lorraine was i was working with lorraine we were not romantically involved at all She's eight years older than I am. We, I had another girlfriend. It was, it was, we were just co-workers, but I thought she'd want to know about this God thing because she, I knew she knew God. Mm -hmm. And she started to pray for me and uh, we would chat. Very easy going, very, you know, not a big deal. We would chat and um, uh, she would pray for me. And uh, it, after a while, she invited me, this is in the fall of 1979, she invited me to a concert, a rock concert, and she knew I liked to go to rock concerts. I had been to see Queen and Eric Clapton and anybody who came through town was always going to a rock concert. So she invited me to a Christian rock concert, a guy named Randy Stonehill and a band named Daniel Amos, and I went there, and uh, I, it was actually quite a good time, and uh listen to this music and at the end the randy stonehill gets up and he says this thing and it's like he said it yesterday he said you know guys i've tried travel and i've tried lord of the rings and i've tried booze and i've tried drugs all this stuff i was trying and he said it wasn't until i met jesus that it made any sense and it and i just went wow I mean, I didn't do anything. I didn't respond right then. I just, we went home and I actually dropped Lorraine off and, and this other kid we were with. And I went off to a quiet place and smoked a joint and said, okay, God, I'll try you. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lorraine invited me to her church. And I, and I went and it was this stuffy suit kind of a place, you know, and but these people always, always, always talked about Jesus. And they talked about sin an awful lot. Eh? Mm -hmm. They were preaching the gospel. And uh, I would go. I would go to these meetings um, for a while. I don't remember how long. And, and I would have discussions with Lorraine. And I'd say, well, you know, these guys say I'm a sinner. And I said, I'm not such a bad guy. I'm no worse than the, you know, the typical response. And, uh, and I, uh, but she kept praying for me. And uh, I kept going to hear these people. And there was, I don't remember any sermon they said other than they talked about Jesus and they talked about sin an awful lot. And so I, uh, I, one night, 
this actually happened. This is this is uh, God came and talked to me. So it was November seventh, nineteen seventy nine. It was about seven o'clock in the evening, and I was uh, having a shower. I had worked all day. I was naked, and uh, I was the water was pouring over me. And a hymn came, to, and this is, guys, why I love hymns. I'm, I'm a huge yeah. hymn lover. I would love to sing like a hundred more hymns all the time. And uh, his huge hymn of the faith came into my mind while I'm having a shower, and I started to weep. And, uh, and I'm actually tearing up right now. And uh, I started to weep, and I started to cry, and I said, you're God. And I'm not. I said something like that. I don't remember what I said, but it was nothing to do with the cross, nothing to do with any profound doctrine. It was just that you're God and I'm not. Yeah. I, I basically, what I did is I turned the shower off, grabbed a towel, and literally crawled around the corner into my room, into the closet, and I shut the door. And I wept. I was naked and wet, and I, and I wept, and I said, you're God. And, and, and so basically, in November 7th, 1979, I gave up, and uh, and I, I gave up, and I received life. I didn't give my life to God. He didn't want that filthy thing, you know? He, I received life from him, and he gave me life. Wow. And it, it, it's, that was the beginning of the transformation. I, that was not instantaneous. Right. That night, I actually went, they, Lorraine was working late. I went and told her the story. And she was thrilled. I had a fight with another guy that night. Like I was all emotionally disturbed. And uh, nonetheless, the next morning, I phoned the guy I had the fight with and I apologized. So there was a transformation. Yeah, something, something happened. I, I started to floss my teeth. That was one of the first transformations because I wasn't taking care of my teeth. Mm. I eventually gave up smoking. And, uh, and that was through some guys I worked with, I went to church with who were very helpful with that. So, so small things changed, but the, it's the inner man that changed. Okay. And, and I started to realize how dead I was mm -hmm. and how much I needed his life. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that, that little church I went to, they raised up a tremendous little Pharisee over the years, and I became a a little jackass Pharisee for a good while. And that was awful. And what I mean by that is they were, they were saying what really matters is that you know the scripture, you know, and I got to know the scripture and I got to be really proud about that. And mm -hmm. I'm not proud of that. That's, that's not a pleasant thing. But that, that thing that happened in November 7th, 1979 is real. Yeah. That happened to me. That, that was the beginning of the transformation, and he has never, ever let me go. Yeah. And he has kept at it. He's kept, 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 you know, not letting me go. Because it, it says he disciplines those he loves. Mm -hmm. And I've had to withstand some awful discipline over the years because, you know, our capacity to sin is way bigger than we ever, ever, ever know. And... Uh, it's huge, that sin problem. It is. And his grace yeah. is way bigger. It's so. a beautiful, beautiful story of God's grace and pursuit. And I love that. It's beautiful. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, but that's the beginning. That wasn't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, that, that got things going. It's got to start and, somewhere. And then along, uh, I, I'm assuming you and Lorraine got married along that journey. <laughs> we did. We did. Then my eyes were open. And uh, we were married uh, about, uh, oh, within the year, actually. Wow. It was, uh, it was pretty, a little too fast, actually, sometimes. My parents were horrified. Because <laughs> uh, my parents, what, what do you do with it? This girl isn't Dutch. You know, she's eight years older. You know, they were just, uh, you know, when I look back on it, when I look back now, if my kid did that, I think I'd be a little, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? It so, uh, worked yeah. out for you. But yeah. it has worked out. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. George, I'm curious. We've been in, in this whole COVID thing for a year now, and people are feeling the weight of that, feeling the cup somewhat get emptier sometimes every day. What's something that you've done to keep keep your spirits up, keep yourself connected with Jesus, keep yourself connected in community? What's, what's one good piece of advice that you could give to say, hey, this 
hang on to this. Two, two things that have, have worked my, my whole life is daily communion with him. Mm -hmm. daily we, i call it a quiet time you can call it devotion whatever the the brethren guys that's what they taught me to do yeah. what a wonderful thing they taught me to do right off the head a daily time with him and connecting with people you know just connecting with people that's uh it's, it's so important i got i have some friends and i dave uh, uh Jim, these guys, I, I spend time and getting outside, mm -hmm. you know, getting outside and walking. So, but it's connecting with Jesus. Yeah. I mean, the, the word is powerful, guys. It, it, it actually speaks, you know, it, it, that's, that's how God, that's how God's always spoke to me. So, yeah. so yeah. 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 Well, George, thanks for sharing your story with us. And uh, um, I'm excited to, to put this up tomorrow, Thursday, right? To put this up tomorrow, and uh, with your permission, of course. Oh. But I I think it's just so great, and it's powerful, and it's your story, and and nobody can can go. No, that didn't happen. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's, <laughs> that's the right. thing, that's the testimony. The power of it. And, and and you just go, wow, you know, and you just let it sit, and uh, I think it's gonna, you know, it just is encouraging people. So. Thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah. Did you have anything else you wanted to, to add I think there? that's great. I, I learned quite a bit about you tonight. So yeah. I'm thankful for that. Yeah. Which is always great learning about people and get to know people more. So yeah. thank you. Great yeah. opportunity. So there you have it. That is our first life story, the first of many. If you want to be a part of this and share your story, uh, we want to hear your story. Uh, people want to hear your story. We want to get to know you. And man, people need to see some other people's faces on our YouTube uh, cameras, our YouTube streams, our Facebook streams, all this kind of stuff. People need to see some more faces. So send me an email at jvineweb at outlook.com and let me know if you want to be a part of this and we'll set it up. We'll do an interview. Uh, we'll make it happen and we'll get you on here as well. Bless you guys. You are loved. We'll see you later.